Louise Golding was an English writer of Ukrainian Jewish ancestry. Born in Manchester in 1895, he attended the Manchester Grammar School and the Queen's College in Oxford. He was rejected from active service during World War I on health grounds, serving instead of abroad as a member of an ambulance unit. His first novel, Forward from Babylon, concerning, to quote, the selected letters of D.H. Lawrence, the struggle of a son to break with Jewish tradition incarnated in his father, appeared in 1920. His grant from the Royal Literary Fund allowed him to travel abroad, producing from his experiences such works as Sea Coast of Bohemia, or Those Ancient Lands being a journey to Palestine, narrating his travels from Port Said to Palestine, while In the Steps of Moses the Conqueror narrates his travels from the Nile to Mount Pisgah. A frequent visitor to Israel, he wrote on the English Jewish community, We English Jews belong to the Jewish race, not the Anglo-Saxon race, but we belong to the polity of Englishmen, and our fathers, brothers and sons have died for England without making any more fuss about it than a Mayfair Duke or a Dorset peasant. Golding wrote more than 30 novels and died at Manchester in 1958. His most famous novel is Magnolia Street, the story of a street divided between a Gentile and Jewish side in the life of the people living there before and after the Great War. He also addressed anti-Semitism and counted it in uh, such works as A Letter to Adolf Hitler, The Jewish Propaganda, and Hitler Through the Ages. However, he wrote tales not connected with Jewish identity at all, such as Louise Golding's Boxing Tales, a collection of thrilling stories of the ring, or The Camberwell Beauty, a most tantalizingly described story whose description on Kirkus Reviews runs as Adventure story with an amazing potpourri of fantasy of mafia activities, of black magic machinations, of romance, and murder in entomology. The Miracle Boy was first published in 1927 with only a few hundred copies sold before the rest of the edition was pulped. G.B. Stern called it an achievement in the nature of a miracle and it was praised at length by Stefan Zweig. The story begins with a researcher specializing in Etruria when he is directed to a small Austrian village in the Florian style by a scholar in Tunisian Sbaitla. In relation to the myth of the Etruscan divinational deity Tages, arriving in the village the scholar finds the local inhabitants not very welcoming to foreigners, and is witness to a strange tradition of painting of larger-than-life figure on the walls of the local houses, a tradition no one wishes to explain to him, only slowly does he uncover the story of Hugo Harf, the miracle boy, and Hans, his raven. Golding presents to us a village of grimy, horrible, primitive people where wife-beating is so common it is not even considered worthy of drawing a pause, and the female members of the household are not considered worthy at all of any consideration. We find here Hugo, the son of a labourer who has nothing special about him aside from the friendship of his talking raven Hans. After his artistic talents are discovered by a passing general, he is sent off to Vienna. However, his dreams of artistic success are squandered when he arrives in a town dying of hunger where no one cares for his introductory letters from generals, a result of the ongoing world war. The great lady to whom he was sent with an introductory letter only cares about whether or not the, the peasant appearing at her door is going to sell her some potatoes. The horrible, self-consuming hunger of those days releases something inside of, of Hugo that results in him being able to commit miracles. Returning home becomes a person equally venerated and feared. While the local feudal lord wants to expose him as a fraud, he is unable to do so until the, the grisly finale where Hugo goes to his destiny while his followers and critics fight each other in the streets of the small village. A result so devastating that their local feudal lord had not, not been seen in the village for many years when the researchers finally arrived in the town. Golding here in his description of the peasantry of the Florian style is condescending, satirical and sardonic. There are few instances of what you could call comedic scenes in this novel. Instead, he tries to give us an impression of the place and the people, though the author clearly never wants you to go to like any of them. The peasantry of the Florian style is detestable, filthy, more human and less in a way. The novel was most recently published in 1954 by Hutchinson, but it is a rather expensive and hard to get edition, so your best bet if you want to read it yourself would probably be the Penguin Paperback Edition from 1944.